Hello, good afternoon from Oxford in the UK. Uh, welcome to uh, wherever you are. I know that we have people registered for this webinar from uh, different countries around Europe, uh, Africa and America this afternoon or morning. So thank you for dialing in and taking the time to, to join us. Uh, so today we have a webinar with Andreas Angelopoulos, who is the program director for our Oxford Chicago valuation program, and he will be talking about how valuation applies in corporate and private equity investments, and also going through the timetables for the program, uh, which will run twice next year in Chicago in April and in Oxford in June. So this is a uh, relatively new uh, executive program that Sai Business School and uh, University of Chicago Booth uh, launched uh, two years ago now. We have run the program three times in the UK. Uh, it's been very popular and very successful, including having uh, a significant number of people flying in from the US. So therefore, we have decided to, to provide this in the US as well to uh, make it more convenient for, for uh, the audience base based in that region. The types of people who come on the program uh, vary, so across the corporate finance and investment space. So we have investors, we have investment managers, uh, we have lawyers, we have accountants and advisors. But the largest contingent group of people who take part come from corporates and businesses where they are either a CFO or a finance director or a director in the strategy area, particularly where they're looking at restructuring. Uh, acquisitions and mergers uh, and want to get more in, involved uh, in that. So typically participants have 10, 15 years experience. Uh, they typically have a, an MBA or have qualified as an accountant or some uh, finance uh, exams. So the program is quite advanced in that we recognize that. Uh, we recognize that uh, we will take one step beyond the theory that people will have seen to go to tackle some of the complexities uh, of issues that uh, are thrown up in the real world. So once you step away from the ideal world models and theories, how does it actually happen? So we'll go through a number of case studies uh, with partners from banks and private equity firms uh, uncovering the detail of that. And Andreas will uh, share the details of that with us in just a moment's time. So the format for this afternoon is that Andreas will uh, go through his presentation. That will take about 20 minutes or so. Uh, there will be an opportunity then to uh, ask any questions. So on your screen, you will see that there is a, a box there where you can uh, press on that. Please type in any questions as we go through, uh, as they occur to you, uh, and then we will uh, loop back around and answer all those at the end. So any questions either about the presentation, any of the areas that, that that brings up, or about the program will be very welcome. Uh, so, so please uh, feel, feel free to do that. I'll hand you over now to Andreas Angelopoulos, who is the, the program director for this program, who will take you through. Uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, thank you very much for joining this um, uh, session. Um, this session, as uh, Steve um, um, uh, suggested, uh, will be uh, first, um, uh, a technical presentation that will touch all the main concepts um, around valuation and how valuation is applying from a corporate m and and from a private equity m and Looking all the different asset classes, uh, that means uh, venture capital, growth capital, LBO, distress, infrastructure and real estate. Um, after we will define the main concepts and we will share with you the main concepts, uh, then we will introduce our program that is probably the answer. Uh, in um, all these questions that um, uh, we will face uh, during this presentation. Uh, then uh, we will go in more details introducing our Chicago session and our uh, Oxford session. That means we will have um, uh, three sessions. The one will be the technical, then we will be the Oxford Chicago Valuation Program, and at the end we will go in more details in the outlines that you can download um, and, and log in in the webinar. How valuation is applying? At the same time, I highly recommend uh, you to send questions. Every slide that I'm presenting, please feel free to send questions during the technical presentation, during the outlines, during the program. How valuation is applying to corporate and private equity investments? When does valuation apply? Are you preparing a company for an IPO? 
and you need to value this company? Are you analyzing the performance of a public listed company uh, as an equity research analyst? Are you merging two companies um, as um, a CFO or as an advisor? Are you working for a government and you want to privatize or you want to dispose public assets? Um, are you working for a big corporate in the M&A division and you want to sell off part of a business? Do you want to acquire a business as a private equity fund or as a family business? Do you want to raise financing for project or infrastructure investments uh, as a big engineering company or as an infrastructure fund? Do you want to restructure a distressed asset? The valuation is applying in different ways. What is important to know in valuing a company or an investment? You need to understand the company's financial statements. You need to analyze the business plan, building the, uh, the operational model projections. You need to analyze and forecast the working capital, the capex and the R&D items. Um, you need to calculate the free cash flow. Which free cash flow? The unlevered or the levered free cash flow? What is enterprise value and what is equity value? Which are the various financing options that you have? from the debt side and from the equity side. Is the IRR the driver for your investment decisions? Are you investing as a company or as a private equity fund? What are the main differences between corporate and investment valuation? In the corporate valuation, you are looking IPOs and public listed companies, or probably corporate M&A. In the investment valuation, you are thinking totally different. You are looking at growth capital, and venture capital, LBO, distress, and infrastructure. And where you are investing, you are investing as a company or as a fund. When you are looking at corporate valuation, you apply usually comps and discounted cash flow. And which discounted cash flow? WAC or NPV. When you are looking at investment valuation, comps and IRR method is driving the decisions. DCF is less relevant. Which are the main valuation methods to apply? As we discussed, it's comparables, trading, public listed companies, transaction, private companies or other transactions that they have taken place in the market, company performance, especially if it's a public company. In the discounted cash flow, we have the WAC and the APV. In the IRR side, um, in the IRR, net present value equals with zero, you look venture capital, growth capital, IRR methods, straight equity, LBO, infrastructure. In LPO, you have dividend lockup. In infrastructure, you have a dividend waterfall. That means you need to discount the dividends too. How does it work? How can financing structures they affect valuation? How the capital structure can affect valuation? What's the debt quantum that you, are, you will raise? What type of debt and what's the pricing of the debt? Will you invest in the equity side, ordinary shares, or you will have a non-cash shareholder loan or convertible preferred ordinary shares? You have different options going out in the market. You can go raising loans, senior, junior, second, lien, mezzanine, or pick loans. You can go to the bond market, raising senior secured bond, unsecured bond, pick bond. You can have combinations. And then you can have ordinary shares, or you can have quasi-equity participation. That means structuring one small part of your investment to be with ordinary, preferred ordinary shares, attaching your voting rights, but uh, for tax purposes or other purposes, you can have a non cash share for the loan instruments, or you can have convertible preferred uh, ordinary shares or a bond. If we will have a growth capital investment, that means you want to invest in a company, you want to take a minority position in a company investing only with equity. What you need to know before you value an asset? Will it be a capital increase? Will you issue new shares? Or it will be a shareholder liquidity? You will sell shares. What's the pre-money or the post-money valuation? Your investment will be on pre or on post. Will you invest with equity or quasi-equity or quasi-equity-equity combination? Do you have tax advantage on your P&L and um, you reduce your taxes through the instrument? That means you boost your free cash flows or not. What's your IRR on the exit? Will you convert or you will not convert taking a minority position with a convertible a bond or convertible preferred ordinary shares, and in which cases you will convert. And if you will convert, uh, do you have any trigger, triggers for the management share incentive plan? And it will be an options plan or a sweet equity participation. And which are the value creation drivers in the growth capital investment? Is it the comps, arbitrage? Is it the EBDA growth? Which are the value creation drivers that they affect your valuation? 
then you can have LBOs. You can have uh, companies that they want to sell majority and uh, then uh, um, you do the acquisitions not with straight equity but with debt and equity. How, what do you need to know before you will value this asset? The first thing that you are thinking is how much debt I can raise for an LBO? What's the maximum quantum of debt? What's the type of debt? What's the uh, quantum of debt? What's the pricing of debt? If I will structure my equity, how I will structure my equity? Shareholder loan versus ordinary shares. Who is paying the fees? Is the previous shareholder that's paying the fees? Is the debt uh, financier, the leverage finance desk that's paying the fees? Is it the equity holder that's paying the fees? There are pro rata between banks and uh, the fund. Do the banks accept refinancing risk? Can my free cash flow serve this debt? My covenants. What's the, f the cash coverage ratio that the banks they are prepared to give me? 1.3 or 1.6? Depending which 1.3 to 1.6, then it will change the type of debt, the quantum of debt I can raise. Changing the quantum of debt that I can raise for the same enterprise value, I have less or more equity value. Having higher or lower equity value in the entry, my, uh, my IRR is going up or down. Will they accept any recapitalization through high yield bonds or other loans that I can have a dividend recap? That means I can take part of my equity out. What's the required IRR and which exit here? What are the management terms and if there are any triggers linked with my returns as a fund manager? That means the management starts to take uh, uh, distributions after I will have an IRR 20%. Which are the value creation driver drivers? Is that the leveraging? Is it the, the multiple arbitrage? Is it the EBDA growth? Which are the value creation drivers that they affect my valuation? Distress. Distress is a totally different asset class. Is it a cash flow or a balance sheet issue? It's a loan to own, control or not transaction. How we define value break? Where is breaking the value? And how we calculate the recovery value investing in a distress asset? Do we use the standard valuation methods like comparables, discounted cash flow and LBOs or there are other valuation methods like going concern liquidation that we need to take into consideration and all together they can create our football field that we will decide the negotiation that we can negotiate. If the asset uh, needs to be restructured, how the restructuring can affect my valuation and what the debt holders they will agree between themselves. It will be a covenants reset, it will be a date buyback, it will be a debt to equity swap, new capital financing, will the sponsor be involved on this discussion? The last asset class that we will discuss is the infrastructure. Are you investing in a greenfield project? That means you built from zero something or you acquire an operating asset. Are you buying Heathrow Airport or you built a, an airport from the beginning? Are you raising project finance or infrastructure finance? It's a different capital structure, it's a different type of financing, it's a different debt quantum, it's a different debt structure, it's a different equity quasi-equity structure. How you define debt service coverage ratio and how the debt service coverage ratio is driving the debt sizing. Will you have dividends each year? In LBOs you have a dividend lockup, but uh, in infrastructure finance and project finance you can have a dividend waterfall. Will you sell the asset in the future? And if you will sell the asset, to whom are you selling the asset? To a pension fund or to a private equity fund? The pension fund has a discount rate 7%, has an IRR expectation 7 to 9%, a P fund has a 10 to 15. That means if I'm selling in a pension, probably discounted the future cash flows, I can have a higher net NPV for my exit sale than a P fund. How I model, I value, I structure this. There are two other asset classes that we are introducing for the first time this year. Is the venture capital finance that we look more early stage investments and how valuations are applying to early stage investments and especially the technology area. It will be probably the leading professor in the US, Steve Kaplan, that he will offer this session in Chicago. And we will have um, another session that will be offered in Chicago and in Oxford that will deal with real estate financing and real estate valuation. 
we will discuss a loan to value, we will discuss a rent, we will discuss a run rate BDA, we will discuss adjusted BDA, we will discuss how CapEx is affecting valuation, we, we will discuss OPCO prop structures, we will discuss WBS uh, um, financing, whole business securitization financing, and uh, traditional financing for real estate investments. Uh, this will be two new sessions that will be added uh, for this April and for this uh, uh, June, and it will be uh, Steve Kaplan leading the venture capital session, and it will be myself with Patron Capital that's a leading distress fund, a leading real estate fund that um, will join forces. The two lecturers with me will be the ex-head of Merrill Lynch Real Estate, uh, Stefan Green, and uh, the managing partner of Patron Capital, um, uh, Keith Breslauer, that we will discuss cases and theory together. This is to give you an understanding regarding the different topics uh, that we will cover during our program. And now I would like quickly to introduce the program and then to go deeper through the outline, and I highly recommend to send various questions that you would like us to answer. Okay, Oxford Chicago Valuation Program. The Oxford Chicago Valuation Program, um, you know, as we discussed, you can download the brochure. You can see it has a, uh, people from diverse uh, um, geographies. Uh, we have a limited number of people that we, we admit. Um, we don't um, uh, admit a big number of people. We want to give the opportunity um, to uh, the students to have the um, the time to ask more questions, interact, uh, and, um, and you know, network with the classmates and um, uh, with uh, the speakers. Uh, um, with, it's not an 80 people class. Uh, it's different if you are 40, and it's different if you are 80 inside the class. That means a limited number of people that we admit in a rolling admissions for April in Chicago and for Oxford in June. Uh, they are from different companies, uh, um, you can see from various banks, uh, Merrill Lynch, uh, Goldman, uh, Credit Suisse, uh, from big corporates like Aramco and Vodafone, or uh, from um, um, sovereign funds like um, 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 Gulf Investment Corporation or like uh, a public investment corporation in South Africa, etc., that you will have the opportunity uh, to see uh, their backgrounds. The important thing that I would like to um, uh, describe is the structure of the program because I think it's unique. There is no any other business school in the world that is offering what we are offering. And we are offering the theory by leading faculty, that is the Deputy Dean of Chicago, the ex-Deputy Dean of Chicago, Mark Simniewski, that is an expert in valuation, Steve Kaplan, that is probably one of the most famous people in venture capital and private equity in the US, the Head of Finance faculty, Tim Jenkinson, and myself. We have 10 executives that are all partners and managing directors in big investment banks or private equity funds. And we will have discussions by alumni that are senior leaders, chairman of Deutsche Bank, uh, the head of Goldman in Europe, uh, the head of Bridgepoint that are coming, they're Oxford Chicago alumni, the head of KKR in Europe that they're coming to discuss and to network with us. That means the first day we will introduce valuation. The second day we will talk about M&A. Third day, we will do capital structure and LBOs. Fourth day, if you're in Chicago, you do venture capital, more technology oriented. If you're in Europe, you're doing more growth capital, family businesses, non-tech. We continue with distress, infrastructure, and real estate. And then the blue are the cases by practitioners. We have the four leading faculty that they're lecturing during uh, uh, the morning, the red part, and we have the blue part on the left side that we have the global head of pharma of Rothschild. We have people from Goldman Sachs, Merchant Banking, Bridgepoint, Centerview, okay, <coughs> that they're coming uh, to present. I will go in more details through the outline on this. We have the two iterations as we discussed, spring in um, Chicago, then the cases and the theory will be more towards United States deals. The cases and the, um, and the theoretical concepts in Oxford will be more European, Middle East, Africa. Okay, we will not have the same cases in the two sides of the Atlantic. And I can describe later. Let's see the outlines now. Okay. 
Okay, we'll start with Chicago. The first day, the Deputy Dean of Chicago will uh, discuss with you um, about discounted cash flow, IRR, and multiples through some uh, theoretical concepts and cases. Then I will discuss in the evening how capital structure affects valuation, talking about debt and equity and different financing structures. Tuesday, the head of Europe of Centerview, Centerview uh, did uh, the Kraft Heinz transaction. We will discuss M&A theory, and then we will do some cases in asset swap, mergers, corporate acquisitions, and spin outs and how all the different um, um, cases, you value them in a different way. We will discuss uh, um, the, the, the merger between Hans and Kraft, Heinz and Kraft. We will discuss the, the corporate acquisition Vodafone Verizon, that is Europe-US. We will discuss another cross-border um, uh, agglomining transaction that is um, a transaction in Africa, how you do an acquisition uh, in Africa. Then now uh, we will have Rothschild, the global head of Pharma, that is coming together with another director and they, uh, Dimitri Siroides, that they are doing uh, um, a corporate acquisition, how an American company buying a company in Greece in 2010. They paid, they paid the top price 15 times CBDA. How will you value a company in Greece when Greece is, out, is ready to go outside of Europe? Um, what's the, the cost of that of Greece? What's the risk-free rate of Greece? How you negotiate all these points? How you apply the valuation methods on this? Pharma companies, they have an R&D component. You capitalize the R&D or you expense the R&D. They have invested 40 million in a development capex in a factory. How do you calculate this? How do you include it in the valuation or you don't include it in the valuation? Which are the working capital issues? This was a family business and there were working capital issues there. How do you calculate this and how you do um, include them in the final price. A lot of concepts that they affect valuation. Then I will introduce Tuesday LBO valuation, the theory. Then we will continue and we will have a modeling exercise. You will be divided in groups and then as groups you have to offer the highest price acquiring a company based on a debt quantum uh, that the banks they can provide you based on a specific equity structure, based on refinancing or non-refinancing risk, uh, based on a fixed charge discovery that we will agree, based on minimum returns. It will be a great uh, exercise as a group. Uh, you don't need to build the model, you will have the model, but it will be a great exercise for you to try to digest the concepts uh, through execution, through Excel, as a group. Then we will continue with an LBO investment case in the healthcare sector in the US by a partner of Madison Dearborn Partners, the head of health, healthcare practice, that's a Chicago alumnus, Nicholas Alexis. Then we will continue with uh, distress restructuring. The global head of restructuring practice of Goldman, Rupe Saka, will cover the theory um, with me. We will cover how distress restructuring is defined in the US and in Europe. And then we will have um, a case that um, will cover um, a distress acquisition. Thursday morning, we will have Steve Kaplan to cover venture capital valuation through a series of cases and all the main concepts that we need to know about financing, structuring, um, uh, term sheet, and valuation, um, linked with telecoms, media technology uh, sectors, with, with general tech sectors. In the afternoon, I will offer the infrastructure valuation section. I will talk about project and infrastructure finance and how you define valuation. And on Friday, uh, because there was a question um, that you sent, we will have um, an infrastructure investment case by Goldman Sachs Merchant Banking. Um, it was um, an acquisition that they did uh, um, um, a Goldman Sachs Merchant Banking, uh, and it will be um, a big asset, a big electricity company, how they did the acquisition, how they modeled, how they valued this company, how did they refinancing using whole business securitization. Then we will have real estate valuation theory with me, uh, the ex-head of Merrill Lynch Real Estate Finance, uh, Stephen, Stephen Green and Keith Breslauer, and then Keith Breslauer with Stephen Green, they will present a series of cases in real estate investments. At the same time, Thursday evening, we will have a dinner that alumni will be invited. They will blend with uh, all the participants and we will have a discussion. Uh, Steve Kaplan, Tim Jenkinson, Madison Dearborn Partners, and um, 
uh, another private equity fund manager that uh, we will disclose uh, soon uh, will take uh, part on this presentation. This is in Chicago. Now let's see the difference with Oxford, that there are not a lot of differences. The difference is in the content, because the cases in Oxford, they are more European, Middle East, uh, Africa focus, the cases in the US, they have some cross border, Europe, US, uh, they have a case in Africa, but mainly they are more United States um, uh, uh, issues and focus. In Oxford, the main difference will be, well, we have on Tuesday an additional case that will be a private equity backed IPO. Uh, Bain is acquiring Brent in Germany, is selling it to BC Partners. BC Partners, they do a debt restructuring, they do a pre-IPO valuation, they do an IPO valuation, and they do four sales through IPO. And we will discuss this with the head of capital markets of Commerzbank that was involved on this deal. The second change, um, the second difference will be in the LBO side, Wednesday evening, we don't have Nicolas Alexos from Madison Dearborn, it will be Bridgepoint, an ex-Bridgepoint director, Luis Duarte, that will do retail investments in Europe, how you build, how you invest in private equity in retail uh, acquisitions uh, in Europe. Um, and we will do LBO valuation. Thursday morning, we will have growth capital valuation. That means non-tech, but more minority positions in non-tech companies. Uh, and then uh, the last thing uh, um, will be on um, uh, Friday, that infrastructure real estate is exactly uh, the same, a blend of American and uh, European uh, cases. Um, this about uh, the technical aspects of valuation, how it's applying to private equity and corporate investments, about our program that is giving a very strong answer and about the two outlines. We will provide two packs. The one pack will be the theory, 700 pages. Another pack, 700 pages that are the cases. They're not Harvard Business School cases. They have a different way of thinking and format. They're like uh, investment banking pitches uh, uh, to clients by the banks and the funds. That means they are very um, applied uh, uh, presentations that um, the people from Goldman Rothschild, they are doing daily in their work uh, and they, the way that they analyze. Uh, they're like investment memos or credit papers um, in a PowerPoint format. And then we will provide a USB stick with all the models and all the valuation models uh, for corporate M&A, for LBOs, for growth capital, for venture capital, for distress, for infrastructure, for real estate. Some of them we will use them in class. Some of them you will take them out and they can apply at work because they are professional models. That means when you will leave, you will not know only the concepts. You will not only interact with the senior people that will be your future network, but at the same time, you will apply the knowledge with all these models that you will take with you and the two packs, 1,500 pages that you will take with you. Now I will be happy to take any questions, me and Steve, uh, regarding the program or regarding valuation issues and questions that we have. The first question, I have reviewed the timetable for the program and I don't see a case study in the infrastructure asset class. As I discussed, um, Ezekiel, uh, there will be an infrastructure investment. It's an electricity company um, in um, in uh, Europe, acquired by Goldman Sachs Merchant Banking. During the infrastructure theory, I will touch an alternative investments, um, uh, infrastructure, solar and wind. <coughs> if we have a case uh, from um, in Africa, uh, from a developing uh, perspective, in the growth capital, whatever we will discuss, it's applying everywhere, or in the infrastructure theory, it's applying everything, the theory and the models, to Africa investments, okay? That mainly is uh, equity investments. You don't use usually debt um, acquiring assets from a corporate perspective, growth capital, or from an infrastructure asset, infrastructure theory. On the other side, we will have uh, a corporate acquisition, an M&A in Africa with uh, um, a James Carter that was used to be the head of uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa for UBS and now is the head of Center. If the slides will be available after the webinar, um, I think the slides uh, will be available, will be mailed to you after the webinar. Any other question? Yes, yeah, so we will uh, circulate the slides uh, over the next 24 hours uh, for uh, the people who are on the webinar today, so you can uh, refer to those. 
Also, uh, using the webinar software, you should be able to see the brochure and the two timetables, uh, which you can download directly from, from, from this uh, webinar platform as well. Uh, for more information regarding the program, you can also go to the website, which is uh, www.oxfordchicagovaluation.com, uh, and that will give you a range of further information uh, if necessary. Um, may I answer another question? We, the admissions are only the admissions, and as we discussed, um, we don't, we don't, you know, the, um, we have a very limit, limited number of seats. Um, the, from the time that you will be admitted in the course and you will pay your fee, we can send you, um, or we can provide you, we can provide you um, all the materials. Um, that means um, you can do um, a pre-reading. Uh, we will have an online um, section that we will give you guidelines how to do pre-reading. And at the same time, um, we, we, we will have a webinar that is to be between uh, the time that you receive the materials and before we will start for the group of people that they will join the course that we will give you more guidelines and guidance how you will do your pre-reading. Yes? we have the option to provide you the materials in advance and we will have a webinar in advance. The earliest that you will apply, the more you can digest. It's better for you to pre-read the materials before and come and go deeper inside the class than to come inside the class, receive all this information and then to try to digest them after. What is the size of the class? The size of the class will be 40 people maximum. We will not go more. We had 52 people in Oxford the last time. We thought that there were too many people. We go to 40. We need you to have the option to ask a lot of questions, to have customized uh, uh, the content to you. That means we cannot go more than 40 in each session. And 40 is a good group size because that means that we have uh, a good critical mass so that people can learn from each other, they can build their networks as we go through, uh, but it's also small enough to give you plenty of opportunity to talk with the program directors, the teaching faculty and the guest speakers as well. And on the other side there will be another 40 alumni and senior investment bankers and private equity fund managers that they will join us during the dinner on Thursday that together with the speakers they will give you the opportunity to blend and to network for life. I would appreciate if you will ask any other question on, on the next uh, five minutes uh, um, and otherwise if there is no any other question Please uh, contact Steve, he can answer any question. You have the outlines, you can see all the videos on the Oxford Chicago Valuation Insights Hub. Um, you can visit us during uh, uh, the Private Equity Forum that will take um, um, place uh, on February 29. And um, you can ask uh, Steve more details about this, that all the senior people from the industry, Blackson, KKR, Advent that will come to present. You can network, you will know more about the course, um, or you can join us February 15. Um, in uh, February 15, is it correct? March 15 in London, that we will have the Oxford Chicago discussions that we will discuss uh, with uh, James Hartshop uh, uh, some cases around uh, mergers, asset swaps, and corporate acquisitions. And we can talk uh, about these events. Uh, and there will be another webinar mid of February that um, it will be a different presentation that will be like a taster from uh, the materials that we will have in class uh, that uh, you can attend. If there is no any other question, I will pass you to Steve uh, and feel free to join us in Oxford Chicago discussions in London, the next webinar or the Oxford Private Equity Forum and uh, your key contact is uh, Steve for any questions. Okay, thank you, Andres. So we just mentioned that all the information is also available on the website as well, oxfordchicagovaluation.com. Uh, so Andres mentioned a series of videos which we have there. So from this uh, page, if you go to the Oxford Chicago Evaluation Insights Hub page, then on here you'll be able to see uh, a series 
of short two-minute videos, uh, mainly with guest speakers who uh, have spoken on the program, many of whom will be speaking again, uh, giving a very short outline of their session. So we have uh, that's from Rothschild, UBS, Blackstone, Goldman Sachs, Bridgepoint, etc. We uh, will send you an email to follow up this webinar today. So thank you very much for registering uh, and, and, and taking part. Uh, we are taking registrations now for the two sessions next year. So the dates for those to, to, uh, to confirm those in April will be in Chicago. That will be the 4th till the 8th of April next year. And in June, we will be here in Oxford the 13th until the 17th. Uh, you can apply online now, or if you have any further questions at all on either iteration, then please reply to the email that we will send you over the next uh, over the next 24 hours. If you are an Oxford or Chicago alumnus, a discount is applying. Come if you are uh, applying more than two people from the same organization, um, in a, you can be under the corporate uh, discount rate. Steve and Lindsay that in Chicago they can provide you more information. For the people applying in Chicago, Lindsay Berry. Um, is the person that um, he can provide you more information. The people that are applying in Oxford uh, is uh, Steve Bruce. Okay, great. So without any more questions, I think we'll uh, wrap that up there. So thank you very much again for your time. Thank you, Andreas, for your time. Thank you. Time. I'm looking forward to see you. Yeah, and we will uh, hopefully see you in Chicago in April or in Oxford in June next year. Thank you. Goodbye.